first day of wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous production. We're here at Knowledge, ServiceNow's big user conference, and we've been going, this is day three for us, we've got a half day today, but we've been meeting with a number of customers, CIOs, IT practitioners. Folks from KPN are here. Petra Zelstra is the CIO of KPN, and Martin Lenoble is the person in charge of ServiceNow and manages that implementation at KPN. Petra, Martin, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us, good morning. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's our pleasure really. Appreciate you guys spending some time here. Let's start with KPN. Tell us more about KPN. You are the dominant you know, tele telecommunications provider uh, in the Netherlands, but tell us a little bit more about uh, KPN. So KPN is actually uh, quite uh, important on the market of the Netherlands. We focus mainly on fixed and wireless uh, communication, but also on IT solutions. So our customers, we have over 45 million customers within the Netherlands. And uh, within the KPN, we are serving around uh, 26,000 uh, employees. So, talk a little bit about what's happening in your your business. I mean, here you've got you know tremendous you know disruption and you know lots of competition, but you still got a couple of big giant whales in the industry. What's it like in in your region? So within our region, what you see is as we are dominating the market quite heavily is. Uh, the, the government is focusing on to get the monopoly down. So we are struggling a lot getting other partners on the market. Yeah. And we have to serve them as well. So it is a little bit of a harsh field to work into. Yeah, so there's a big hand that's sort of dictating some of the requirements yeah. that you Correct. have to comply to. So yeah. what does that mean for your IT infrastructure? What kind of pressures does that put on you? So as we are dominating the infrastructure, we need to allow our competitors to use our infrastructure. So uh, yeah, we do that at the best service as we can, but it feels a little bit awkward. <laughs> 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 so I remember when we went through that in the United States, yeah. and uh, you have to bite your tongue and do what's Precisely, necessary, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's get into the whole ServiceNow uh, implementation. Uh, well, first of all. Is it, have you been to more uh, uh, multiple knowledge conferences or is this your first one? So this is my first one for ServiceNow, although I was two weeks ago, I was also at the CA uh, technology event, both in La Las Vegas as well, so, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Oh, you spend a lot of yeah. time in Las Vegas. I do yeah, too, I do. with theCUBE. <laughs> uh, so so for, well, give, give me your impressions of the, of, of the conference. What, what, what do you think? What I noticed, and I'm not sure what Martin thinks of it, but I taste a lot of fun. And I really enjoy that. Uh, ServiceNow is uh, really liking what they do. They're really enthusiastic. And that gives me also a lot of energy and ideas what we could uh, utilize in the Netherlands. Yeah. I, I'm also really impressed with the way it was organized. It's, it's, it's good, right? Incredible, you have 4,000 people who all can, can drink and eat and, 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 and be in a conference room at the same time, it's incredible. Yeah, the logistics yeah. were very good here. Yeah. The, the, the accommodations are very nice. So and it's, it's, a, it's a also a good mix of, of uh, informal meetings, meeting people in, in, just in, 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 in the hallways and having uh, good conversations and good speeches as well. And it's a good mix of, of, of CIOs and IT practitioners. Yeah. And, yeah. And, so it's and, they all, and, and they all get along as well. It yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> it's unique for a small company yeah. like this. All right, so let's get into the service. How long have you guys been working with, with ServiceNow? What was sort of the catalyst to bring ServiceNow into your organization? Yeah, so we, three years ago, we started to work with ServiceNow, so we have quite some experience at this uh, stage. Yeah. Uh, and a year ago, we started to work with the self-service portal as well. And I must say, we started to become innovative using that uh, kind of services. Okay, so, um, well, what was, the, what was the catalyst to bring it in, and how did you justify bringing it in? So what we uh, had in the, in the previous time, we had several systems that meant every time we had to onboard a customer, it took several systems to work with. So what we did is, is uh, we decided within the company that we didn't want to develop our own software anymore. So we were looking for the best breed of uh, applications uh, suppliers that could help us to bring value to our business. So one of the things what we notified with service now is, is that they are first, the best breed uh, with this application area, but also the relationship with ServiceNow is quite good because if you want a strategic partnership, you need to focus both on also development and new functionalities. And that's actually what we find uh, in ServiceNow. So how did it occur that you were able to bring in ServiceNow, uh, Petra? Was it something that, 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 that you had a vision of? Was it someone like Martin brought it to your attention? Was it the CFO driving it? How did that all come about? Um, as I'm quite recently in the role, but right. I know a little bit of history, it was actually on the strategic level, VP level, where they decided we need to go into a, an, another direction. 
So together, together with the CEO, CFOs, etc., the decision has been made to go into a new direction. And they finally selected service now for this part of business. Do you feel like your executive management are, are IT savvy? I mean, it's somewhat uncommon to have, we keep hearing about the, the cobbler's children, uh, but here you had a situation where the, the senior executives were pushing for something like this. Is that unique in your view? Um, I think because uh, our company is focusing both on telecommunication and IT, they, they know sometimes much more than we do. So I think mm. that is also part of, uh, of that job. It's yeah. a, a bit of a blessing and a curse, actually. Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yeah. they, they know what they're talking about, but that's also the, the, the downside. Sometimes Precisely. they know even better. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's no hiding. <laughs> <laughs> right. And to be focused every time. They know enough to be dangerous. Really. Precisely. Yeah. 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 And we need to make sure that we, we keep focused what we need to do and not interfering, that them interfering us too much. So that is quite of a juggle. All right, let's talk about the self-service capability that you've built. Describe what that is. You seem you know, very proud of it, so I want to learn more about that. Yeah, so we're quite proud on the self-service portal. What we actually did started uh, one year ago, we started to build the self-service portal in which the customer has the possibility to find answers on their issues, problem, incidents, etc. And what makes it so unique is that actually customers who enter the self-service portal can find their answers directly. They can do that 24 by 7. So as you know, if you're at home and you work on your iPad, you want a solution now and not tomorrow. And what is also quite unique is, is that the users from this community help each other. And what does that mean is if you have a question and you go to the self-service portal and you don't find an answer, you can actually write your own knowledge article goes to the service desk who make it qualified that it can enter into the system. So the next time another user has this question, can find the right answer into this uh, knowledge uh, database. So there's a social component uh, of it. Now, now where did that come from? Was that part of the ServiceNow capability okay. or did you guys build that? No, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it is part of the ServiceNow capability, uh, but it was uh, specifically uh, thought up uh, for this, just to bring the cost down and to, to keep it interactive. We, okay. we, it's, it's, it's always uh, strange to have people uh, work with you and not being able to help each other, but at night, uh, when, or in, in the evening, they go home and write a Wikipedia about other things. So why not bring that action to the workplace? Yeah. So talk about uh, the, the clients that are on this, using this self-service portal. It's, it's, it's mostly internal clients, but you also have external clients. Can you describe that yeah. a bit? So we have, uh, the customers who internally are using are of course the people who have the office automation, the workspace, so they can use it for that one. And actually this year we're going to bring also business application to the knowledge article, so our 600 applications will be served by the self-service portal as well. So that is mainly internal focus. We have also external customers, over a thousand customers, who also have the possibility to enter this self-service portal and find the answers on their question. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have uh, reached this year that over 10% of the incidents are actually solved by the users themselves, and 41% of customers who have a question so, uh, solve their answers on the self-service portal. Versus, now what, versus what, calling up or, yeah. Yeah, so or sending an email? Yeah. Precisely, so that is amazing. So it means the service desk can focus on the more complicated stuff. Where do you see those metrics going over time? Uh, the idea of the self-service desk is, is that it will go up even beyond uh, the 50, 60 percent. That's what we uh, anticipate on. So when, when it gets to that level, what happens you know, to your business from a cost standpoint? How does, that, you know, how does that benefit? Can you quantify that in any way? Uh, that is a little bit hard because we are in the way to find it out, but uh, for me as an IT uh, responsibility, we always have to drive on cost. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the cost is uh, going down. So what we did is we made an agreement with the service desk. They promised us that the cost would go dramatically uh, 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 downsized. And let's see what we will uh, accomplish. So maybe next year you can ask me what okay. the uh, end result was. So <laughs> we, we hear a lot of customers saying, okay, we start with incident and change and, and problem and we start building the CMDB. Yeah. Uh, is that where you started and where are you on that journey? Th that's, that's where we started and uh, that's where we are, we're, we're at now. Uh, we, uh, we use the knowledge uh, portal as well. Uh, we're always exploring other options. Uh, ServiceNow is, is always expanding, always always uh, searching for new ways to, to please their customers. And uh, our, uh, our vision on this is that we already paid for all these modules, so why not use them? So we're always exploring, at the moment we're exploring the asset management module, and uh, we're exploring the vendor management module as well. So you have existing tools to do things like vendor management yes. and asset management. 
How does that transition go? Uh, how do you sort of bring on the new and tear down the old, and how do you manage the disruption associated with that? Well, it's, it's uh, of course, always uh, life cycle and cost driven. Sometimes uh, s s uh, certain things are just end of life cycle. You have to replace them. Are you going to buy something new, or are you going to buy, or are you going to use something that is in SAP or in service now? Uh, so that's that's always uh, the choice you have to make. C can you go ahead? So I think what is also quite important, as I mentioned before, we are always looking of the best of breed solutions. What we do see is the suites into service now. Uh, we always look at them, are they indeed the best of breed for that kind of specific services? If not, we will go for another solution. If yes, we will go for the service now. And the second hand, we're trying to influence service now as much as possible so they can actually uh, change the modules into the way our customers are looking for. So this brings up a very interesting discussion, this whole best of breed versus integrated suite. You, know, you mentioned you, you use SAP, did I, did yes, I hear we do. that correctly? Yes, we do. So this is a classic example. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, SAP, the beauty of it is it's sort of big and uh, you could do so many things with it, but the problem is it's big and so many things you could do with it. Yeah. It's, it's complex. So, for instance, if you want to do HR, there might be some other packages. So you, your philosophy, Petra, is you guys want to be best of breed. That's the, the primary uh, objective. A and then maybe secondarily is sort of the, the integrated suite. Is that right? That's correct. And so what we do is, is for every um, process, we are looking into applications. So no development on our side anymore. We're looking for most of the time SaaS solutions who are really best of breed in that kind of uh, field. So that is the idea. Now doesn't that somewhat defeat the purpose of sort of a single system of record or does do you somehow integrate ServiceNow into maybe those other components? Yeah, so we uh, have a platform of several systems and we integrate them heavily. So the CA technology with ServiceNow is heavily uh, um, inserted and also SAP we are looking into how we can integrate that as well. But that is quite a challenge. Yes, and ServiceNow is our core and other systems are integrated in ServiceNow via a bus. Yeah. Now, given that you're looking, it sounds like you're, you're really looking for SaaS and off the shelf commercial software. Yeah. Uh, can I infer from that that you don't plan on developing a lot of your own applications? You know, we're hearing a lot about uh, App Creator and things like that, or will you take advantage of those things? So the app creation is definitely a field I'm interested in. I, uh, I, I, because what I want is, is technology infrastructure should be a commodity, everything seems working. My customer these days wants services. They don't want technology. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for is how can I keep up with the speed of my customers? And therefore I'm looking for solutions outside of the market. So we saw that presentation of Fred with the application development. I'm quite interested in that part. That looks really promising. So how do you, so let's go back to the self-service for a bit, because it's something that you guys are, it is somewhat unique in terms of what you're describing, and it's quite a large scale. When you think of self-service, you think of things like you know, Google and Facebook and, and Amazon. Do you feel like you're on the path to achieve that level of experience for your users? I definitely think so, and, and it's not because I'm saying it's my customer are actually saying that, and that is key important to me. So we saw the satisfaction uh, level of the customer went up, and what we do also see is, is the customer these days want 24-7 support. So example, you're coming home and your kid have problems with the iPad mini. I know 100% sure they go to my self-service port, and it's fine. And if they don't find the answer, they can enter it into it. So for me, more open, the better it is. We right, are well. here to serve each other. Yeah, and you get learning from that, and then yeah. you know, that knowledge permeates. So, so how about things like single sign-on? How do you handle that challenge? Uh, we alri already incorporated single sign-on, so it's uh, so that's not, pro not a problem for ServiceNow at the moment. Yeah, we started that last year because what yeah. we saw is this people entering twice the system is not uh, of their convenience. So we started to enter that uh, last year and I must say people are quite happy with it. So tell me more about what the users are saying. I'm interested in, in your, your clients' experiences. What kind of feedback have you received? It, it is a f it's a good question you're asking. There are double uh, reaction. First of all, they are not aware of it, so you need to make sure they get aware that there is a self-service portal. So what we did, we did a lot of communication and uh, telling uh, and, and broadcasting the world we have a new self-service portal. 
once they get used to it, is they're quite happy with it. And what you also see is, is we're actually rewarding people to come to the self-service portal. So every time they go there or help someone, they uh, deserve points. And in the Netherlands, they're quite keen on getting uh, points. And I think based upon that, the reactions uh, became quite positive. Yeah, and they're quite upset if they can't find the answer into the system. So um, yeah, I think um, that's positive. Yeah. I, th I think users don't really care if they're using ServiceNow or something else. They just want it to work. And, and ServiceNow is just, uh, is just uh, the, 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 uh, a means to an end. I think but that's a good thing he said. It's actually not the tool, it's actually the services that we're delivering. And ServiceNow is able to give us that possibility you to know, deliver that's that really, service. That's an interesting comment because you think about, you think about Salesforce, people, the salespeople know they're in Salesforce. There's yeah. a very sort of high degree of affinity there, whereas ServiceNow, it's invisible. Yeah. And yeah, you're, so the, you're the service yeah, provider. And, and that, that comes with, with the shell we put over it as well, our self-service portal, is, uh, gives us our own look and feel, so people don't have an uh, idea, they, they think they're on an internet site, probably. Yeah, I love yeah. that philosophy, yeah. ServiceNow seems to have it. They want to make you the heroes, they don't want to yeah. necessarily yeah. Yeah. And they do that excellent, yeah. That's good, okay, we have uh, time for, uh, I have one more question for each of you. Uh, so, Petra, let me start with you. From a CIO perspective, what advice would you give your CIO peers in terms of thinking about bringing in a capability such as ServiceNow, generally and specifically around self-service? Um, so my comment is, um, what I do see is, is technology is a given for the customers. The customer just want a service and they want the best service there is. So what I think you need to do is make sure your lights on is as it should be, but focus so much more on the self-service so people can have the perception that they get what they want and they get it now and they get it whenever and the best uh, uh, kind of answers they're looking for. So I think that's where you need to look for. And with your own department, you will not be able to do that anymore. So you need partners to help you to be quick, flexible, and providing the service your customer wants. Now Martin, you're in the front lines. You know, <laughs> we're making it all happen, yeah. right? Uh, what advice would you give your fellow peers and practitioners? I would say uh, invest heavily in, uh, uh, heavily in communication as well. It's people, process, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, especially the people part is, is very important. Uh, if you're replacing old tools with new tools, people always get a bit homesick and they want, their they, they want the old functionality back. And you have to uh, force them to, get to, to, give it a, to give it a chance. And uh, stay, uh, stay, to, uh, stay true to the out of the box SaaS solution. Don't go uh, yeah. uh, changing too much in, in, in the beginning and really give people the, the, the time and the chance to, to, get to, know, to, get to, know, to get to know the new product. Yeah, communicate yeah. those benefits. Yeah. Precisely. All right, Petra and Martin, thank you very much for coming on and sharing the, the KPN uh, ServiceNow story. It's really a pleasure meeting you both. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with the winner of the hackathon uh, right after this. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE. We'll be back right after this word.